Okay. Hey guys! Hey! Hi. Hi. Happy Wednesday! Hi. We have a special guest today. Yes! Yeah. Hi. Hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. And since our topic is kids and dogs, we thought Riley would be the perfect one to join us, and we'll do some demos with her later. What do you think, Riley? Good. Awesome. Okay. So this is a subject near and dear to our hearts because I have kids. Nancy has kids. Lauren has kids in my life. I have Riley. Riley. <laughs> she Riley. Um, and every day at the school, we see people with kids, and they don't understand how to teach their kids how to interact with dogs. We largely blame, it's a harsh word, the media, because your kids grow up looking at dogs in cartoons and seeing movies and, and stuff in magazines, right. and they're always hugging dogs in their faces, but we know the truth, and that's what we're going to show you today, what the truth is, how to prevent dog bites from happening, um, and just basically how to make it safer for your kid and your dog, yes. yeah, because it's important that the dog's safe, too. And that's so important, because every time you open up a magazine or you turn on the TV, there is, there's some child hanging on the dog, laying down, sleeping oh, next to them. Oh, How many I know. times do you see on Facebook the baby on top of the dog or hanging from their ears? It's just it's just not good. You have a puppy that goes up and walks on the dog's little bouncer and like curls up in a ball and sleeps next yes. to it. You can see that. Yes. That's yeah. Crazy. And I think uh, you're going to be ruined forever, right? Yeah. So just, <laughs> just let us say that all the things you thought were cute are now going to make you go, not cute. Oh, right. my God. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, you're, we see them and we're like, oh, my you see this? Yeah. It's yeah. like the sixth sense. You know, exactly. the kid, he saw dead people. Yeah. You're going to see dog bites. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> sorry about that, but it's really, really important for you to learn. I think we should start out with Nancy's story. I mean, I think we all have dog bite stories, but Nancy is a good right. one. Right, and this actually isn't even a dog bite story, but it's just how I was traumatized. Um, when I was young, I had a paper route, and I would go and deliver the papers to this house that had two giant German shepherds. And every day, the German shepherds, they weren't fenced in the backyard. They would walk the perimeter. So I would throw the newspaper and run. <laughs> I probably had that job for two or three years. Those people never paid for the newspaper because I could not actually walk onto the lawn like to collect money, money without them coming after me. So it was very scary. And even when I started working with you, like I always was a little hesitant with shepherds. Yes, she was. This is true. And now Kathy gives me shepherds all the time and my best dogs are shepherds. Yeah. But it just shows that something so little can be so traumatic. The dog never bit me. It just barked at me and it really scared me. And imagine yeah, I mean, if you'd mm -hmm. gotten bitten, I, I right. probably wouldn't be working with you. Yeah. I yeah. was bitten a couple times as a kid. Were you? Yeah. I, there was an Irish setter. I was like four. Oh, and wow. we were walking. It was in Jersey City. And I was walking by the fence. And here comes the Irish setter right to the fence. And, of course, what did I do? Stuck my face right <laughs> And I reached oh. And my dad says that what I did was reach in to grab the dog dog trainer in training yeah um, and he pulled me away and I remember being on his shoulders he was running away and I was crying not because I was hurt but because yeah. I wanted to keep that interaction up like I wanted like he was yeah. making me leave the dog yeah, yeah. Oh. I was like four five I, I remember that like it was yesterday and also um holding the sheep dog who chased me down the shore and bit me in the butt but oh wow see those herding dogs you run from well, them yeah, yeah. right and, and actually yeah. you never want to run dogs, like the German Shepherd they unfortunately have that stereotype of right, right, right. scary mm -hmm. but a sheep dog, you think, oh, cuddly, soft. Let me do a, let me do a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and the dog was yeah. like, come back here, sheep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My mom told us a story once. Was it at the poodle, the big standard poodle that she went to someone's house and she's always been afraid of like standard poodles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or like I don't care. I can't remember if it was a big one or a small. I think it was a big one, but she was always said, like, "No, no, they're so nasty." Like, right? You know, the standard poodle. That's like her fear because she got bit when she walked into someone's house. Right, and then that stays with you, and we don't want that to happen. You either become a dog trainer, trainer or it stays with you. exactly. <laughs> okay, you can level. Let me give you some yeah. statistics to scare yeah. you more. No, okay. just kidding. You to educate you. Yeah. yeah. So what we do now, and this is statistics, and we make sure they were valid because we went into the CDC archives. Right. Um, half of all kids ages twelve and under have been bitten by a dog. Now, we're not saying it's stitches, um, but they have been bitten in some form mm -hmm. by a dog, whether you went to the hospital or not. Most cases of dog bites are unsupervised mm -hmm. or the yep. kid teasing. The dog is sleeping, the dog is eating. Um, and this is going to be very interesting for you, is by the majority of those dogs, 
are by dogs the kid knows. Mm -hmm. yeah, 47% is the family dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you want to, you know, think about the statistic, just pop up YouTube and watch yeah. dog and baby and dog and kid videos and right. you'll see how people, right. they're just doing a lot of things wrong. Uh, we also know the dog bite prevention. If you do one session in school, and I used to do them in Florida, we do them monthly at our school. One body language prevention session in a school decreases by a ton the incidences of middle school and younger kids having this happen to them. Because once they learn it, they respect right. it. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not saying scare the kids, but we're saying no. be cautious. Be cautious. And right. What about and always this? supervise? Did you know that? I can't. Sorry. She can't <laughs> Dog bites are the second most frequent reason for kids going to the ER. Yeah. Oh, well, that's. And I bet you that's know. So that's so sad. preventable. And where do you think the biggest place on a kid that gets bitten? What's the highest? I'm percent? afraid it's face. I'm just going to say it's either the face or their hand, like reaching and face. The face. The face. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the face. Yeah. We also know um, that for hugging the face, sorry. puts. Right, right. Dog. The dog is sleeping. The kid wants to come up and sleep next to it and snuggle next to it. Right. Give it you kisses. Don't, right. Or... You don't. You just don't do that. Yeah. And that brings us to our top eight things, which we're going to rip through because we want to do our demo for you. Yes. Right. Now, there you can get. If you go on the link. You can like get this in the comments. In the comments, yes. Brittany's going to post it. Hi, Brittany. You can <laughs> see. <laughs> great. It's right there. Um, we call the essential guide to positive interactions. And this is, like I said, really a passion project for us because we never want to see your kids get bitten. And I feel like I've been doing this over 30 years. If I would have archived pictures of kids' faces through the years that I've seen who have been bitten, I mean adults too, but kids or their bodies, mm -hmm. I would it would be bigger than the Harry Potter yeah. Chronicles. Yeah. It's, it's just that. So we're going to help you prevent it. And if you don't have kids, that's fine because you got to protect your dog from kids. Right. right. you got to teach people whose kids come up to your dog how to do it right. And that's important, not to get off topic, but if you don't have kids, your dog might be afraid of kids because they've never seen them. Exactly. So you right. do want to desensitize them to children. And we do that all the time. All the time. Dogs all, to the the school. Yep. all the time. So that the dog understands what a child is. Yep. Right. Okay. So the first one is um, teaching babies to reach out and touch a dog. And that is the first thing a child wants to do when they see the dog those little cute hands come out to touch the door. Have you ever seen parents do this? Wait, you're the baby's hand. They go, pet the doggy. Oh, oh you want to pet the doggy? Mm -hmm, so yeah. you magnetize your child yeah, right. to want to touch the doggy. And then when they're toddlers and they can walk around, guess what they're eye level to? Right. Big the dog. Furry, fluffy dog. And they run towards them. them. Oh, right. touch the doggy. Right. Except now you have a bigger problem. So look, your kid eventually will learn to pet dogs when... You teach them properly. They'll also learn how to use a knife. I'm not putting yes. a knife in my baby's hand exactly. when they're little. Learn how to hold a knife. No, we'll do it later when you have sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the next one? Um, understanding what the dog is saying. So a little body language. Body language. Yeah. yeah. The biggest thing I think people don't understand is that stillness means I'm giving you a three count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And stillness so is not good. Right. And then people think the dog stillness equals acquiescence. Acquiescence, mm -hmm. like you come near a dog with the bone and they stay over it, like quietly, and you're like, "Oh, he's gonna give me the bone." Yeah, because exactly. in people, right. right? Like, say kids were wrestling, and one gets wrestled and then just goes limp, right? I'm done, and right. like, yeah, I win, right? right. So, <laughs> yeah, so was it good? It was good limp. I'm practicing. Yeah, yeah so, that's pretty good. So then people go, "Oh, the dog is still. It means take my bone. It doesn't. Right. It Not at all. You got a few Don't seconds before I take the next step. Right. Or even the tail. Like how many times? Tail. How many times do people? You know, you hear people say, "Oh, the dog's tail is wagging. Yeah, that means wagging. it's happy." Like. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that the dog is happy. That really it's scary. scary. Yeah. Rattlesnake. Right. Yeah. Like that yeah. one. Or, you know, or how it's but like, you know, you don't really understand how to hear. And, and that's a huge point. It's yeah. context and combination. Right. Like what so it's not the just the tail. You don't know what the you know what the tail's doing, but are you looking at the front? Right. right. So you're looking at the mouth. It it's a lot. Still, right. Yeah. And yeah. if you can't speak dog, which we want to teach you. Then how are you going to teach your kids to speak dog? Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? That's how we have body um, This is a great one. one. When you say to somebody, "Can I pet your dog?" That's what everybody teaches their kids. Yeah. Ask, "Can I pet your dog? Is your dog friendly?" They don't know. No. Right. 
To them, they're friendly, sure. But right. that doesn't mean they're friendly to a little child. They probably know what their liver function is better than they know if their dog <laughs> exactly. is friendly. Because we see tons of dogs who come to school, and the people are like, oh, these are the nicest dogs yes. ever. They right. did bite my husband last night. But, but otherwise, right. they're good. They're right. So nice. Yeah. yeah. So they people don't know. To. And it's also embarrassing. Terrible. Right? So if somebody says to you, is your dog friendly? What are you going to say? If you're me, if so, you're not no, you, Lauren, so, I'm pretend like, you're fake Lauren. You're like, oh, he's kind of nice because there's like a social yeah. stigma. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, if I tell you no, then they'll probably judge me and I don't want to be judged. Right. And then right. I would let the dog do it. And then so the here's dog your out. Me, yeah. Here's your out. If you don't want to say it, if you're building up to that confidence, say, normally I'd say yes, but he just vomited in the bushes and I have to take him home. Nobody wants to touch that. So they're right. going to stop asking you. Frequently, though, if you say, oh, my dog is tense or he's in training or he's a little aggressive, sometimes you get really weird answers. Like, oh, all dogs love me. Yeah. They or, love me. My brother watches dog training. Are you I sure know. they love me? How often right. does that happen? Wait, Always. I've had dogs all my life. Have you heard that one? Yep. Oh, yes. no, I've had dogs yep. all my life. I've had teeth all my life. I'm not a dentist. <laughs> it means nothing. Yeah. Right. So don't be fooled by those things. Just get out of a bad situation before it gets worse. Yeah, because even if you say no, some people are going to be like, it's fine. And then just and reach no, it's not anyway. fine because, like, you'll have to pay their medical bill. Right. Yeah. So they yeah. And then course, it even it's my fault, even though I said no. And if the dog, you know, right. it's still going to be exactly. your fault. It happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Appropriate contact with dogs. Just what we were talking about, what you see on TV and on Facebook and in postcards and of that artist that does the babies with the dogs, it's not appropriate contact. Mm -hmm. This picture, Plain by simple. the way, is perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Love that picture. Exactly. Yeah. We get Christmas cards that look like that. Yeah. And All the time. We're not yeah. like big meanies and we're like joy killers. Well, maybe a little bit. But our goal is that your kid or your friend's kids or a kid that just runs up to you when you're walking outside doesn't get bitten, your dog doesn't get traumatized, and you don't lose your dog. You're going to be traumatized, too. So these are just safety precautions. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to say that if you tend to hug your dog, like you're the adult and you're, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? Do what you want, but not in front of your and, mm -hmm. and then you're teaching them, oh, it's okay to hug other dogs. And that's really where a lot of bites happen. Yes. The kids are at play dates, or there's a dog that comes to a soccer game, and like, I love dogs. And boom, they right. get nailed. And right. sometimes it's so fast that the owner doesn't have time to say anything. Right. And they seem so used to their own dog. You're like, yeah, they probably can hug their own dog or pet their own exactly. dog. And they think, oh, you know, I can pet my dog. I can go over and pet this guy's dog or this person's dog. Or because kids don't generalize like dogs do. Not <laughs> true. Yeah. Um, and we're going to show you a demo with that with our five second rule. Yeah. But let's yeah. press on. Yeah. Okay. So um, the dog is not your babysitter, right? With a child, par parental supervision is always, always needed. Yeah. Even if it is your own dog, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You cannot have a child alone with a dog. Yeah. It's a dog. It's accidents an happen. Accidents you know, happen. what if the kid trips and falls or, you know, what if. Right. And anything could happen. Right. And we talk about this all the time. What if the dog has an ear infection mm -hmm. that day and you don't know it? And things that that dog normally can tolerate, it doesn't feel good, it lashes out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do that when I don't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I just get I'm nicer. Either. Nancy doesn't. You get nicer, is that what you said? I know. I get mean. But can we define supervision? Nancy, oh, right. read yes. that. That's not supervision. See what Nancy's doing? That is not supervising. That's reading. Supervising is your eyes are on the dog and the child. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, that's a lot of work. Okay, well, then you have to separate them. Right. Mm -hmm. Give them a break from each other, which, yeah. by the way, your dog probably wants. You anyway, absolutely. Um, but it is supervision that has a conversation attached to it. It's, oh, you know, what do you think that he's doing like that? What do you think about his, his behavior now? And it's a uh, course depend on the age of the child with Riley it would be can you tell if this dog is happy or sad or, or angry and then if they can't you say oh little tiny pieces oh look at the ears just digestible right. pieces and as they get older the conversation is more complex mm -hmm. but if you do that you get kids who know how to read dog body language and don't get bitten right right and also supervision when your kids have friends over right uh, your child is not the supervisor and your dog is not the play toy Exactly. Your dog, actually, yeah. when there's a ton of kids at your house, would probably be happier in the up in your in the room or in a crate or hanging out with you yep. uh, and not with kids. Could you imagine you have five kids over? You're like, all right, now I'm going to teach you all how to deal with this dog properly, and I'm going to stare at you while you do it. The kids are like, 
Um, I yeah. think they have a play date somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't do that. And it's exhausting for them, doesn't it? It sounds good. <laughs> <sounds good. laughs> yeah, but the kids aren't going to listen. That's not going to supervise. And then we we'll know what play date. Sounds like the, and the dog's going to need some time to, you know, Absolutely. for all those kids at the house, it's used to one kid. Like, if, we, if Riley has kids over, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. two extra kids. I'm like, that's a lot of kids. I can only and, imagine how the dog is feeling. And teach your kids when they go to play dates. I don't care if you see their kids and their own book. And the mother right. says, oh, you can hug them. It's fine. Yeah. It's not fine. No, These are my house rules, and they follow you everywhere. Right. Right. Until you're a legal adult. And the next one is, is 30, 35. <laughs> Dogs need a break. And yeah. we kind of have really touched on that, that when there are all these people in your house, we always talk about dogs don't like parties. They don't like kids' birthday parties either. No. Give them a break. If there's a lot of kids in the house or even your own child is playing a lot, have a little time out for both of them just to go and separate and kind of take a break. Mm -hmm. And you feel less than there are a bunch of kids at your house. Yeah, uh, we didn't have a birthday party. Oh, yeah. No. We, we had birthday. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, usually I'm upstairs. <laughs> see? Yeah, see? That's see? what your dog you're says, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a dog. Right. Honestly, yeah. yeah. No, seriously. Absolutely. I yes. want to be in my room away from the, there's 12 four-year-olds at my house. No, I'm good. Somebody, I'm sure, out there is going to think. Thanks. But what That's about, a lot of kids. <laughs> they're going to think, what about service dogs? Whole different yeah, animal. It's a whole different, yeah. They're, it is. they're wired differently. They're bred for more tolerance. It's just a different animal. So for those of you saying, well, why can service dogs handle this stuff and not mine? It's a wiring and a breeding issue. And they are very carefully cultivated to be the dogs they need to be for yes. things like this. So there's not even a comparison. Right. Like and they go and through oranges. so many tests. Right. And constant and training. The other thing is, if you do see a service dog, let them do their job. You don't need to be over there petting them and leave. Yeah, let yeah. them do their job. And the person whose dog it is will say, usually, my dog is working. And that goes for canines. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So let them do their job. Okay. Some kids, adults, have different rules. Yes. Yes, that's... And we kind of touched on that. Yeah. And it's really, it's from a time when Elisa, my daughter, was really little, like seven. And she went to a play date. She went to Madison's house. And she's like, well, Madison's mommy lets her dog sleep on the couch. And Madison's mommy lets Madison hug the dog around the neck. And Madison can pull on her tail. And I'm like, you know what? Madison, You can't play with Madison anymore. Has different <laughs> rules. And I'm thinking, right. and Madison's mommy is going to be a student at my school probably in about two months right. when something <laughs> awful happens. Yeah. Why not? Give her my Why car. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her where I'm located. Yeah. So your rules have to follow the child. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very important. Okay, number eight. Dogs don't think like people, but there are some people rules that dogs apply, that apply to dogs too. For example, you don't take something away from a dog, just like I wouldn't take, if you had something, I wouldn't just grab it out of your hand. You don't do that. I don't yell at you. I don't pull your hair. I don't lay on top of you. All those don't things. Don't cannonball. Yeah, in the bed, exactly. When I'm sleeping, right. And I think when you put it this way, kids get it, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you don't like when I do that to you, right? right. So why would the dog? Yeah, yeah. Right. And at actually, cute pictures where the dogs pulling on, where the child is pulling on the dog's ear or the tail, or yeah, just, exactly. Or even the collar. We happen to have those little pictures. Which they will all get. Yeah, oh, they will, right? All these little diagrams are going to be yeah. in this awesome guide. So in the comment section below, it's free. Don't worry. Yeah, so like this the, is a great It's gold. Um, and you guys so share it. So. You put it out on the table. People come yeah. over to your house before they come over. Say, you're coming to my house with your kids? I don't have kids. Here, let them yeah. read this. Yeah, this, exactly. this is in my Bible, and you have to sign the bottom. Well, maybe not. But it's kid friendly, too. It's kid yeah, friendly. It's people friendly. It's people -friendly. -friendly. It's big it's letters. Like a comic. You can read it real quick. Can I just really say, interesting. Brittany made this. Oh, I wrote yeah, it I and she job. designed it's it. It's perfect. It's I love it. Yeah, I really like it, Britt. Not to brag about everything, but I did. I just <laughs> yeah. read it for the first time again. I've seen the It old looks ones. great. It's, it's, and yeah. it's so useful. And it's, it's in awesome. color. You guys will yeah. get it in color, but we printed that out in black and white to right. save some ink. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. it. And what you have is kind of talking about dog's body language. Correct. How to read a dog and then doggy body language. Right yeah, there, and these important. are great to stick up on your fridge. Yeah, yeah. but was, our goal, seriously, is that you never have this happen in your life ever. Right, um, and and it's, it's easily preventable. Yeah, you want to teach them the five second rule? Sure, with Wilson and Riley. Yes, 
Riley was in the green room, but now she's coming back. Where do you want to go? Uh, yeah. I'll scoot over so they can all see her now. All right, let's put you right here, okay? Cool. See now, this is where Sid stays work. Okay. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna get the dog, and I'm gonna explain. So we're gonna do the five second rule. Um, and we teach this in class. We think that people pet their dogs mindlessly and keep petting them and the dog starts to move away and they pull the dog back, come here. So you're really saying you're doing this for me. It's what I want from you. But that's how dogs bite. And that's how dogs get pushed into that feeling of, I don't want to be with you. So we do the five second rule. Riley's going to pet Wilson. This is Daryl's dog, Wilson. If you're watching Daryl, he's awesome. Hi, Daryl. Great day, babe. Hi, um, and she's going to pet him and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And then take her hand off. And then we're going to wait and see what Wilson's decision is. Wilson may want more petting, and he'll tell her that. Or Wilson may want to walk away, and that's awesome because we're letting him do what he needs to do. Okay? All right. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to count to five, okay? And then when I get to five, you'll stop petting. Okay, ready? God, go see. Wilson. Go see. You can pet him. Oh, no. <laughs> Come over here. You can pet him. Yes. Go ahead. Pet him. Yeah, what a good boy. It's so nice, right? Hold his collar okay. and just let him stand. Ahead, so she can pet his back. back. There you go. Nice. One, One two, three. Four, five, and then let go. Now, what is Wilson's decision? I'm more interested in everything else, right? Mm -hmm. He did not go back to her. He did. Okay. Right. Let me see if he'll be for me. Go see, go see Kathy. Hi, Wilson. Wilson, hi. <laughs> he does. Hi, Wilson. Hi. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. Nope. And you don't want to be petted. So don't take it personally. Right. It's and, not an insult. Right. And I was going to say the other thing too. Don't be like, oh, come here. No petting. Right. right. As a people right. do. Right. Go see the dog. All the time. Like, come here. Right. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Oh, come here. Wrong. Why does right. the dog want to be pet? Because it doesn't. As my aunts used to do that with squeezing your cheek. Oh, who's a mabella? Listen. And you're like, oh my God, Listen. stop. Right. Um, so if you want to be your dog's best friend, teach your kids to be your dog's best friend. What you need to do is teach them this five second rule. Let's try it. With Cody. with Cody, and if Riley would rather not, maybe Nancy can. Okay, okay. I think she should be okay. She I'm gonna come. I'm gonna get the other guy. Okay, great. See, this is so important. These little things that you don't think about, but really, you've got to be more mindful of your interactions with your dogs. I think people interact with their dogs, they don't even think about it because you got a million oh, things going on, right? right? Absolutely. You got the kids are late from school, or you've got an appointment, or whatever, and it's like, yeah, 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 with the dog. And sometimes you're coming oh. to the dog for comfort or companionship, and you're not taking the dog's feelings oh into consideration. And all that, it's like their tolerance. You're chipping away at it, and then one day, it just pops. So we feel like this is for all dogs, not just dogs that are bike risk. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. Ready? He's very, he's very sweet. He's, he's, very, sweet. Lovely. he's very sweet. Yeah, he's okay, so you know what lovely. What I'm but you know what? Here's that. Well, you know what I thought was, the, was awesome about that? When you say, I don't want to, that's exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Like, but yeah. I've seen parents yeah. who would take his sure. hands and go, no, pet the dog. And yeah. I was like, stop it. Because maybe your right. child instinctively in their gut just does felt not something yep. and pull away. And yeah. then you force that issue and it's not a good thing. Trust your gut. They're afraid. I mean, we always say too, you know, if you're afraid of spiders, <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, give you a spider and be like, no, here, just right. touch it. Just yeah. Yeah, no, let me do it. Let me do it on my own time. If I ever want to. If I, yeah, I'm good. I don't want spiders. <laughs> we'll try to One, two, three, four, five. And he's yeah, coming he back. Want me, and he's a shepherd. Go figure. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Cody wants his frozen yeah. stuff. Coming. He does. He wants the call. He does. He really did want. It's okay. He did dancing. It's okay. He was he like, "We'll just pretend, pretend for TV." Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh boy. So we hope that this helped you. It certainly is just a tiny baby it's snapshot really into everything we know. It right. takes more than this little bit to everything <laughs> we know. Oh, and Wilson said he wants to come <laughs> again. He wants to run. So. What we want you to do is go in the comment section below, grab your guide. <laughs> Wilson says do it now. Wilson also says don't forget to like the page, subscribe to our newsletter. Oh, my God, our newsletter is awesome. We have contests. We do free stuff. We yeah. have a lot of great information just like this. Um, and we will see you guys next week. And our next body language seminar, too. Riley. Oh, wait. Body That's language seminar us. is not on TV. It's at the school. No. Um, we do that once a month. Oh, can we preview what next week is? <laughs> what is it?
What is it, Kathy? Training your rescue dog. Ooh. Things you should know. Because <gasps> it is a little different. And we know a lot of you want a rescue dog or mm -hmm. have a rescue dog. And you're like, it's a hot mess. I guess somebody said that to me yesterday. They emailed me, Facebook message. They said, I have a rescue dog and it's a hot mess. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we can fix that. So stay tuned. Was a rescue dog. That's Remember? right. I he forgot. A hot mess. Yeah, and I've had Oops. rescue dogs too. Mm -hmm. and, and they are. But then you fix them. Absolutely. So anyway, yep. that's our preview. And I will see you guys next week. Have a fabulous weekend. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks, Riley. Bye. Bye.